dangerous, and it's like wall-to-wall -wall crime. By the early 1900s, the city was like 400,000 people. Yeah, this might be the coolest monument that we've seen in any of the countries we've been to. People are very friendly and I get a good vibe from this city. Welcome everyone to Rosario, Argentina. Beautiful city of Rosario, Argentina on a beautiful sunny day. Literally not a cloud in the sky. We made it. We're here in Rosario and today we're going to do a little exploring around this area. The area around this monument, which is the National Flag Monument. It's beautiful. And we're going to talk a little bit about the interesting history of Rosario and also why even before visiting this city, I sort of felt a little bit of a connection to this city. Thanks for clicking on the video. If you want to help out the channel and help it grow, I really would appreciate it. Click on the like button down there, the subscribe button, and the little bell next to it to be notified for when new videos drop. It really helps the channel grow because it's going to help the YouTube algorithm recognize this content and spread it to other YouTube viewers. If you'd like to support the channel monetarily, I would appreciate that as well. You can leave a super thanks by clicking this thanks button here and give a small donation to the channel. I appreciate your support. So back to the video, enjoy. Now, people all across Argentina, when I came for my last visit, warned me not to visit this city. They said, it's dangerous and it's like wall to wall crime and, uh, and that I shouldn't visit. And in our first visit here to Argentina, we didn't visit Rosario. We went to Buenos Aires, Cordoba, and Mendoza. But this time, coming back, I knew I had to visit Rosario. And one of the reasons why was specifically because everybody was telling me that it's like wall-to-wall -wall crime and it's very dangerous and you shouldn't go there. But there was this one gentleman who I spoke with. He was a, uh, a taxi driver. And we talked about Rosario and he told me, look, Rosario is just like any other city. There are good neighborhoods, there are bad neighborhoods, and the media uh, runs with this crime narrative and blows it way out of proportion. So everybody is like super scared of the city and it's not like a fully deserved reputation. Now that, that made me really want to come visit the city because uh, as many of you will know I'm gonna flip the camera around here real quick as many of you know I am from Chicago the city of Chicago Illinois in the United States and Chicago if you are familiar has basically the exact same or very similar reputation it is a wonderful city. It's a giant metropolis, the third largest city in the United States. And Rosario is also a large metropolis, third largest city in Argentina. And both of them have what I would consider an undeserved uh, reputation for being very, very dangerous. Now, it's not to say that the cities don't have problems with crime. They both do, but the scale of those problems is definitely overblown, I think, by the media. And it's what sort of made me almost like connect to Rosario before I even came here. Because it's like I had heard this narrative, you know, dozens and dozens of times, many, many times already, about Chicago and it made me think that maybe there are some similarities between Rosario and Chicago and the more I looked into it the more I realized there are actually a lot of similarities between Rosario and Chicago and I think I think we need to talk about some of them before we do that though let's talk a little bit about where we are right now the National Flag Monument. And this monument is uh, very impressive. It is gigantic, for one. It goes all the way down there 
to the street where we started the video. And then it comes up these steps, up past this like building here, and it actually goes further on. And what's really interesting about this monument, and I didn't know this until my friend Charlie XP actually told us, is if you look at it from above, which we don't have a drone, but look at this picture. If you look at it from above, you'll realize that it's actually shaped like a ship. And the monument here is the mast of the ship. It's very cool. This monument is from 1957. It's the, uh, I believe, 100th anniversary uh, of the death of General Manuel Belgrano, very famous general, very famous figure in Argentine history, in the history of Argentine independence. And the reason that they have this monument here and the reason why Rosario is called the cradle of the Argentine flag is because right out here, you can see across the street, there's a river, a big river. In fact, let's walk over that way while we talk. It's a big river. It is the Paraná River. It's a very important um, waterway for Argentina. And in 1812, General Belgrano planted the Argentine flag for the first time on like a little island across the, uh, across the river there. And right here in the park, across the street next to the river, there's a monument here too. General Belgrano. There he is right there. Now, when he planted the flag here, this uh, city was not a city. Rosario was a tiny, tiny little settlement, probably less than a thousand people. And Rosario, for a long time, was not a city. His founding is very, very different from a lot of the cities that we've been to. A lot of the cities we've been to so far, it's been, you know, the Spanish showed up in the uh, 1500s or early 1600s. They planted a flag, they built a church, and the city grew from there, right? Or they uh, they took over what was previously, uh, you know, Incan or or a city of another civilization from before, and uh, and they they made a city, and the city grew, you know, over hundreds and hundreds of years from back in the 1500s. That's not the case here in Rosario. In Rosario, this was basically just all farmland for uh, most of the 1700s and the early 1800s. Just farmland, not even uh, what you would consider um, a city. In fact, they didn't even really keep population numbers, so it's hard to tell exactly how many people lived here. You get some reports like Charles Darwin sailed through here up on the Paraná River. And he said, he wrote like in his memoirs that this is, uh, it was a small town uh, or a large town rather of about 2,000 people. And that was in 1832. So uh, like I said, it wasn't really a big city. And one of the reasons was uh, in the wake of Argentine independence, like I've said in many videos before, there was uh, a lot of civil wars happening, power struggles between different power centers in Argentina. And the main one, was between Buenos Aires, the Unitarians who wanted to maintain like power over the entire country from Buenos Aires, and the Federalists who uh, wanted each individual province to basically be uh, more or less an individual power center, and Buenos Aires would be a sort of a, an overseeing, coordinating power. And during the uh, course of those wars, the powers, in Buenos Aires made it so that it was illegal for any international ships to traverse the Paraná River here. And so it made Rosario what is now a major, major port city, a major center for trade. Uh, it was impossible to trade with Rosario. All the trades from foreign countries had to go through Buenos Aires. And in the wake of the uh, culminating battle, the Battle of Caseros, which we actually talked about in our previous video about Sarmiento, in the wake of the Battle of Caseros, when uh, the Federalists defeated 
the, uh, the Unitarian forces under General Urquiza. There were some, um, a group of population here of leaders in the small settlement area here in, in Rosario that were allied with Urquiza. And Urquiza, for their loyalty, um, basically gave them control here and opened up legally the Paraná River for navigation for foreign powers. Which, me which meant that Rosario could now become a major, major port city and they'd be able to, uh, to trade, especially agricultural goods, from the areas around here because Rosario, just like Chicago actually, is surrounded by agricultural lands uh, where they grow crops and they can come here to the river and be shipped out. It's a major, uh, major port. And actually, if you can see right down there, there is a large, like a cargo ship or something sitting there. So the Parana River was now open for navigation and it happened at a time in sort of the mid to late 1800s when there was a massive, massive immigration, European immigration boom to Argentina. So the timing sort of worked out perfectly and the city grew like very, very rapidly because, largely because of European immigration. In fact, by the early 1900s, the city was like 400,000 people and about 50% of those were European immigrants. So uh, the story in that way is also very similar to Chicago. Chicago had a major, major industrial boom in the late 18, mid to late 1800s. A massive influx of European immigrants came to Chicago and it became a major, major shipping center uh, because the Great Lakes were connected to the Mississippi River in the United States by the Illinois, uh, Illinois Michigan Canal, which was something that was built in uh, the mid 1800s, I think 1848 maybe. So once again, even more similarities between Chicago and Rosario. You can tell now why I said I sort of felt a connection to, uh, to Rosario before I came here, right? Because there are a lot of similarities between Rosario and my city, city of Chicago. And I have been referring to, to sort of explain to friends and family in the United States what Rosario is like and what its history is basically. I've been sort of referring to it as the Chicago of Argentina. But, I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe Chicago is the Rosario of the United States, or maybe it's both. Anyway, I think from here, I want to walk uh, out past the Flag Monument. I want to check out the Flag Monument a little bit more, but then walk over a few blocks, because over there a few blocks there is a beautiful plaza, plaza of uh, 25 de Mayo, the 25th of May plaza which 25th of May is the, uh, the date, 25th of May, 1810, uh, the date in which Argentina like basically declared independence from the Spanish. So it's a very, very important date. It's a very cool plaza over there, I think, and I wanna go check it out. Flag monument here, I think is really cool. It's got this very uh, kind of like art deco style font all built of these stones, which actually were, most of them came from the Andes Mountains. And if you know your geography of Argentina, Rosario is on the other side of the country from the Andes Mountains, which means they had to haul all of these stones all the way across the country to get here to build this monument. So it's very, very cool. And uh, like I mentioned, it's gigantic. Uh, so it was a big, big, um, undertaking a big undertaking 
to build this monument. From the top of the stairs here, you can really see the scale of the monument. You can see those people down there, especially like that gentleman who's standing right at the base of the monument. I mean, look at the size of this thing. It's gigantic. It's very, very impressive. And then inside the structure at the top, which I guess, if this is a giant ship, this would be like the wheelhouse. So cool. Very, very cool old like Art Deco style and remember of course all of these stones hauled from the Andes across the country. Really truly impressive monument and right underneath what is the uh, I guess the wheelhouse, the mast and the wheelhouse there is the Galeria de Honor de las Banderas de America. The gallery of honor of the flags of America. It's like a little museum. Because this is the flag monument, I think in here they have flags from, uh, from all the countries in the Americas. So uh, what do you say we go in and check it out? So we're inside the gallery of flags. And uh, I just actually spoke to a woman who works here, uh, Carolina, and she actually said <laughs> Unprompted, and when I told her I was from Chicago, she actually said, oh yeah, Rosario is like the Chicago of Argentina. She said it, unprompted. So I guess it's more of a thing than just me telling people that. I guess that really is sort of the reputation. And we had a little conversation about how like, yeah, there's problems, there's crime, but it's like overblown in the media and how there's a lot of similarities between Chicago and Rosario. It's very, very interesting. But anyway, here we go. Organización de los Estados Americanos, the uh, OEA here in Spanish, but of course in English that would be the uh, OAS, Organization of American States. Antigua and Barbuda. Now one of these days I hope to visit all of these countries. I've mentioned in some previous videos there are some problems with visiting certain countries, for me at least. Um, I speak passable Spanish. I do not speak very good Portuguese, like they do in Brazil. And uh, I'm learning Portuguese, actually. I started very recently to learn Portuguese, but it's a little tricky. Here you have Canada, Chile, where we visited. Beautiful Santiago, Chile. And here's two, Colombia and Costa Rica. These are two, two countries that I, I do hope to visit. Let's see, another one that I hope to visit is right here, Bolivia. When I was traveling through Ecuador, um, a lot of people told me that Bolivia is very cool, it's very chill, and that uh, Bolivians are very nice, and that if I enjoyed Ecuador, I would really enjoy Bolivia, and that put it on my list immediately because I really enjoyed Ecuador. Everybody there was super nice. It's Cuba. Now, Cuba, Cuba, kind of a problem to visit if you're a United States citizen. It's very, very hard to get a visa, like a tourist visa, to visit Cuba because of the relationship between the United States and Cuba, which has not been very good for the last, oh, I don't know, many, many decades, if you've been paying attention. There's Dominica. Hey, there it is. Ecuador. Ah, oh, man. I'm really enjoying myself here in Argentina, but uh, I do miss Ecuador. We had a really good time there. El Salvador. It's another place I'd like to visit, El Salvador. And there it is, Estados Unidos. Granada. Oh, and here, España. Of course, not part of the uh, Organization of American States, but very important, very important to the history here. Oh, 
Por favor. Ah, muchísimas gracias. Muchas gracias de nuevo. That was the woman that I mentioned. Carolina, I believe her name was. She just gave me some like uh, brochures. And here, Argentina. And there it is, the flag. And of course, this is the flag monument. Ah, this is really cool too. They have the Italian flag. Which of course, as we mentioned in like many, many videos previously, one specifically, which I'll link in the description, but uh, Italy, very, very important to the history of Argentina because there's so many Italian immigrants that came to Argentina during the 1800s. Guatemala, Guiana, Haiti, Honduras, Jamaica, Ah, there is our neighbor, Mexico, the United States and Mexico. Very, very uh, integral histories. You can't understand the history of the United States without understanding the history of Mexico. And the two countries share one of the longest borders in the world. And they have a very, very strong economic relationship between Mexico and the United States. Mexico is a very, very cool country and I would really love to visit Mexico at some point in the future. But like Argentina, Mexico is one of those countries that's so big, the history is so old and the culture is so diverse that you could go there, you know, 10, 15 times and never see everything that there is to see. But one of these days, we'll go check it out in Nicaragua. Panama, Paraguay. Here's Paraguay, one of the uh, one of Argentina's neighbors. Paraguay, along with like Bolivia, Chile, Uruguay. And Peru, where we were in beautiful Lima, Peru. That was fun too, man. We had fun in Lima. A lot of cool stuff to see there. That city, just. <laughs> Gigantic, 11 million people. Very chaotic, but very fun. Very cool city. Dominican Republic. St. Lucia. St. Vincent and the Grenadines. St. Kitts and Nevis. Suriname. Suriname is a really interesting, uh, really interesting country. Not a lot of people visit there. Not a lot of people talk about it. People sort of forget that it exists sometimes. But I've heard that it's a very interesting country. I'd like to try to visit it sometime. Trinidad and Tobago and Uruguay. Uruguay is like the, um, I don't know, it's like, it's almost like a, like a brother to Argentina. Uh, the cultures are very similar. Uruguay was part of Argentina. The, the, you know, vice royalty of Rio de la Plata for, for a long time. So the cultures are very similar. The histories are very closely intertwined. And uh, it's right there. It's right across the estuary. You can actually hop on a ferry and head right over there. Ah, and Venezuela, finally. Venezuela. Well, that was great. We saw the flags. That was really cool. And actually, right after, when I was on my way out, I started talking with Karina, her name is, not Carolina, I got that wrong, Karina, and also Walter and Francisco, three people who worked there at the Hall of Flags, right? And man, we were just, we were just chatting it up for like, I don't know, 20 minutes. They were super friendly. This is the thing I was saying about uh, Rosario. Like I mentioned that people are very friendly and I get a good vibe from this city. Like. I get a really good vibe from this city. Those people were super cool. They were very nice. Uh, they subscribed to the channel, so maybe they'll see this video. If you see it, Karina, Walter, and uh, and Francisco, it was very nice to meet you. Mucho gusto. And uh, now they told me, 
And actually we can go to the tower here, right? The mast of the monument. And we can go, we can pay 500 pesos and take an elevator up to the top. So we're gonna do that. Before we buy our ticket to go up in the elevator, this is what it's like inside the tower. They have lights that light up this part of the ceiling with the colors of the Argentine flag. It's super cool. And they have a statue of Manuel Belgrano. Cross over here. And if you stand right in the middle, because it's a dome, I don't know if you can hear this in the video, you probably can't, but there's a really, really insanely cool echo where your voice just bounces straight back. And it sounds like you're talking in your own head. It's very cool. All right, let's buy our ticket and go up to the top. All right, so we made it to the top. 500 pesos, you get a little ticket, head up a short flight of stairs, hop on an elevator, and bam, you're here. Up at the top, you can see the Paraná River over there. And oh, something else that I didn't notice before, but right over there, that looks like a memorial to the fallen from the Malvinas. Because right there in that pool, that's the Malvinas Islands, or at least that sculpture is in the shape of the Malvinas. Let me zoom in. I think that's a war memorial to the uh, to the Malvinas War. There's that big old cargo ship that we saw out there coming up the river. And you can see from up here, like just how big and wide the river is, just how flat the land is around here. And of course, on the other side of the river there is an entirely uh, another, another province, the province of Entre Rios, which means between rivers. And it's a, it is, it's a province that's between two rivers, two major rivers. And if you keep going up the river that way and just to the like north part of uh, Rosario, you'll see there's a big bridge. Let's see if I can, there's that big suspension bridge up there, which is actually a pretty recent construction and it connects uh, Rosario to like Santa Fe province over to Entre Rios. If you stay on that bridge and then continue on the highway that's connected to that bridge for maybe an hour or so, you end up in a city, a small city over in Entre Rios called Victoria. But you can see from how flat and calm the river is that this is a, the perfect, perfect river for like shipping and navigation, which is why Rosario ended up becoming such a big city. From this side you can see down onto the rest of the monument. Really, really cool. This is a very, very cool monument. This might be the coolest monument that we've seen in any of the countries we've been to for a lot of reasons, right? The Hall of Flags down in there underneath the, the like wheelhouse part. The fact that it, the entire thing is like shaped like a ship, right? To honor, of course, the importance of like shipping and the importance of this river to the history of Rosario, and the fact that you can come up into this tower and like see all of this is very cool, very very cool. And you can see over there, beyond, that's the backside of the uh, the cathedral and the uh, Plaza 25 de Mayo, right over there. All right, we're here in Plaza 25 de Mayo. Right here, beautiful plaza. Lots of trees, very much an Argentina plaza. Right over here, across the street from the plaza, is a beautiful, beautiful church. The Catedral uh, Basilica de San, uh, Santuario de Nuestra Señora de Rosario. Basically the Cathedral of 
the um, sanctuary of Our Lady of Rosario. You can see around the plaza, I don't know if you noticed this, but the architecture of these buildings, like this one over here, and uh, also the, uh, the church behind us, this building right here, this like pink colored building here, and this building here as well, they have this old uh, neoclassical mid to late 1800s style architecture, that architecture that you see all over Buenos Aires, right? The very European uh, style architecture. That's why, you know, Buenos Aires has the nickname of being the uh, Paris of South America. And the same is true as far as architecture here in Rosario. In a lot of places in Rosario, especially around the Centro, this neighborhood here in the center of Rosario, you see this mix of this kind of architecture from the late 1800s and also this kind of architecture here from the mid 20th century. And the reason, of course, is because that's when there were major economic booms here. There was a major economic boom in the 1800s with late 1800s with the massive European immigration, like I mentioned, but also in, uh, in the mid 20th century, you know, uh, Rosario had become a major, major industrial center. Not just an agricultural center, but an industrial center. This, of course, is also very similar to Chicago, my city. And as Rosario became a major industrial center in the 20th century, its population just continued to grow, continued to grow. Now, Rosario right now has a population of like uh, just over 1.2 million people. So it's a very, very big city, a big metropolitan city. And like I said, it's the biggest city in the province of Santa Fe, but it's not the capital. The capital of Santa Fe is further up the river, up the Paraná River, north of here. And um, Rosario, unfortunately, like Chicago, and like some other cities in the what's called the Rust Belt of the United States, um, in the 80s and 90s, Chica uh, Rosario fell on hard times because uh, a lot of the industry was actually sort of moved out. A lot of the industry faced competition, foreign competition. And a lot of the industry that made uh, Rosario into this big industrial powerhouse sort of fell to the wayside. And uh, the city fell on hard economic times. Now as we walk back down towards the flag monument to, uh, to finish off the video, I wanna talk a little bit more about recent history here in Rosario. Now Rosario, like I said, fell on some tough economic times in the 80s and the 90s because of uh, a lot of the industrial and manufacturing sector, a lot of foreign competition, some of it moving out. But that has sort of rebounded recently in the 2000s, in the 2010s, and more recently, they've diversified their economy as well. They've sort of reinvigorated the agricultural sector. They've also um, sort of like diversified out into different um, sectors of the economy, including oil processing and also like high tech and service industry. And also Rosario, because it is a major, major city, you know, with 1.2 million people, it's basically the largest uh, metro area in Argentina outside of um, uh, as far as like like e e economy wise it's the most significant economic area in Argentina outside of the Buenos Aires area so it's a major major metro area because of that it's a major tourist spot people do come visit here even though there is that narrative that it is dangerous I came to visit here but not just me people from other parts of South America other parts of Latin America, and other parts of Argentina as well. So Rosario, even though it's had its ups and downs, I think it's still a very, very great city that you should definitely come visit. If you come here to Argentina, it should be on the list to visit at some point. And we are gonna see a lot of cool stuff here in Rosario while we're here. And as we walk back towards the uh, flag monument here. Beautiful flag monument. 
I just want to say that, uh, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I feel a kind of connection with Rosario. And uh, from right when we got here, I sort of, I don't know, just sort of settled in. The vibe on the streets um, and the people that I've talked to so far in just like the short amount of time that I've been here so far has been very, very chill. It's pretty cool. It reminds me a lot of Chicago. And there's something about it that it like, it's definitely not like the super relaxed Mendoza vibe where everybody's just like chilling out drinking wine. <laughs> and it's different from the Cordoba vibe. I don't know exactly how to explain it. It's kind of hard to explain these things when it's all just vibes, right? And like how it feels. But I've quite enjoyed it so far. We've been here very shortly. Like I said, it's going to be plenty of more to see here in Rosario, and I'm going to be I'm going to be honest. I'm really excited to see a lot of what Rosario has to offer. And I'm really glad that honestly that I met that one cab driver we were talking about. The one guy throughout my travels here in Argentina who said and he said it like very confidently too. I think he actually was from Rosario. He said, look, the idea that it's that it's just so dangerous that you don't want to go is bullshit. I think we're gonna call it and stay stay tuned for more content from here in Rosario. There's plenty of stuff we're gonna see. It's all gonna be very interesting and fun. And I hope you stick around. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one.